back. It's part two of being able to survive a police encounter. So this is more back onto my personal story. We were in a different zip code. It's only like 10 minutes away from where we live. When we got pulled over, like I said, my husband was very compliant and he knew his right. The cop asked for my husband's driver's license and registration and my husband asked him oh what seems to be the problem officer and the officer informed us that there had been some thefts in the area so my husband complies he is looking in the car he goes back does his stuff comes back he's looking in the car with his flashlight he looks in the back seat he sees our child is sleeping and then that's when he sees the hatchet the hatchet was like i said before under the <laughs> under under the driver's um, seat kind of tucked under you know how you have back floor mats in the back seat so it was even like tucked under there we had used it for camping we forgot about it until he saw it and he decided to make an issue of it you know he was asking my husband um, oh why are you guys out here with the hatchet and all this other stuff and we're just like are you kidding me like we live in an open carry state to be questioned and hounded on a hatchet when people can open carry freely in our state it's 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 a little confusing it's a little baffling as we all know just because there's a law just because there's something put into place um, some of these laws have a double standard for certain demographics. He asks for the hatchet. He, he says, well, I'm a little concerned about the hatchet. I need to search your car. My husband's like, no, you you can't search my car, but I, uh, you can call another squad car out and they can bring a dog and sniff around. And if you guys find a reason to go into the car, then yeah, you can come into the car and search it. Well, you was doing 55 in the 54. Uh -huh. Lost the registration and step out of the car. You carrying a weapon on you, I know a lot of you are. I ain't stepping out of shit, all my papers legit. Well, do you mind if I look around the car a little bit? Well, my glove compartment is locked, so it's the trunk in the back. And I know my rights, so you gon' need a warrant for that. But as of now, no, you can't. No, you can't search my car. And the officer didn't really want to call back up. He didn't want to call for a search dog. And at this point, He's never really fully addressed who he was. Yeah, be careful of that, guys. Uh, there are people out there who impersonate cops. At this point, the he seems a little agitated. You know, he's looking at the hatchet. He's looking at us, even though he sees our daughter in the back seat. He sees me. He's at, he, he asks me, you know, a few questions like, "What are you guys doing out here?" Um, all these things. And it's it's funny because I'm the passenger, and I'm being questioned too. But anyways, he asks my husband to get out of the car. Um, license is fine, registration is fine, insurance is fine. But he asks my husband to get out of the car. My husband complies and gets out of the car. The cop was about, I would say, in stature, maybe 5'9", with boots with a heel on. So he was kind of a shorter gentleman. And my husband is 6'2". Um, a very muscular, broad build. So I don't know if he felt more comfortable with me getting out the car. Um, I don't know if he thought that I could somehow do some theatrics and flip over to the back seat and grab the hatchet yeah. and go against him who has tasers, handcuffs, pepper spray, mace, and a firearm. But uh, he had me get out the car as well. And I got out the car. At this point, I'm, I'm trembling. I'm I'm terrified because I'm pretty sure all of us in America and even across the world has seen plenty of these murders of these police shootings and of these beat down people have been flat out murdered and I've had no excuse Ow. you've even heard cops saying well I don't know why I did that and they still get off my husband he's, he's like I said a tall man he's 6'2 and he's he's letting the cop know you know hey we're down here we were shopping this and that and my husband gesticulates when he talks he talks with his hands. So he's doing this and then the cop goes, mind you at this point, the cop had walked away and when he was talking to us, trying to figure out the assess the situation, he put his hand on his holster of his firearm 
and he was telling my husband, you know, uh, don't make me shoot you. That is when I just broke down. I started crying. I, I, I had tears in my eyes. I started crying. I was like, what did we do? What did we do? You know, and I'm on the other side of the car. So here's my husband and here's the man, the officer. My husband is actually clearly like 15 feet away because the man, the officer had started to come around the car to question me, but he kind of stopped in the back of the car, puts his hand in his holster and he tells my husband 15 feet away, you know, don't, don't make me shoot you. And the guy's like, look, I want to see the hatchet. I need to see this hatchet. Um, I don't feel comfortable. And you know what? My husband figures, you know, this guy is not going to let it go. He's not. At this point, our, our rights have pretty much been encroached upon. There's no reason why he needed to take us out of the car. There's no reason why he, he needed to put his hand on his weapon with my husband 15 feet away at least and, and, and threaten to shoot him with a baby girl in the back seat sleeping, mind you. He, he steps back and he goes like this. If you want to see the hatchet, you can open up that door and you can look at only the hatchet if that's what you need to see. So the officer proceeds to open the door and you know he takes out the hatchet. Let me show you the hatchet. This is the hatchet that almost cost my husband his life, almost cost my daughter ever being able to see her father walk around an aisle, to ever have a father and really grow up with one and she almost lost all of that. I almost lost, like I said, my husband. As a matter of fact, at the time, the hatchet was sheathed. And I don't know if you guys can see it, it even still has marks on it from chopping wood. The guy, the cop saw the hatchet and he was satisfied, he put it back and he was like, okay, you guys are free to go have a good night. And I was thinking, you just threatened to shoot my husband 15 feet away from you because he gesticulates when he talks you know you're fully you're fully armed we never knew why we were pulled over besides there was theft in the area but just pulling a family over because what you ran their license plate number and it shows up that they're in the wrong zip code that's the only thing i can think of because my husband didn't do any wrong turn signaling, he didn't violate any traffic laws. The only reason we got was because there's thefts in the area. We saw on the back of the guys, the cop was still following us. Um, he literally followed us up to the city border, the city limits, and then did a U-turn and drove back to his city. We were completely in a right, but my husband didn't get mouthy, my husband didn't use profanity. My husband knew his rights. He stated them calmly. Everything can change in an instance. That's why I say surviving to live another day is not cooning because my husband, if he wanted to get upset, he would have done the right. The personal experience we experienced, we still complied and we made it out of the city. We made it out of the situation. We made it out of being another headliner um, on our man killed because he raised his hands or because he gesticulated and cop thought his fingers were a gun. If you're getting pulled over, just keep in mind these things. They might be encroaching on some of my rights here, but at the end of the day, if I can put myself in a better situation to where I can get out of this, where I can go home, uh, that's phenomenal. That's, you're able to live to see another day, to be vocal about these things, to, to speak out about these things, because if you speak out about it in the heat of the moment, that might be the last time you can ever speak out about it. And it will make no impact. Some of these people will speak out. They're justified in these things, but at the same time, it's the wrong time. Get home, get safe, make it the right time, right place. Don't let it be the last thing you say. I wasn't threatened to be shot. I, I, I've never had a gun pulled out on me, but my husband has right in front of my eyes. I hope this helps. And if it doesn't help you, it might help someone else. So please like, share, or subscribe. And until then, take care of yourselves, love one another, and upbuild one another.